But I rate your first job, and don't take more than five minutes, is to just sketch out what you think a scientist looks like. So I draw a quick little cartoon sketch of a scientist. Pause the video here until you've done your five minutes. Okay, so I want you to look at your sketch and I want you to compare it to these. So does your sketch, is it a man? Um, does it have glasses? Do they, are they holding like some kind of beaker, some kind of uh, science bottle? Are they wearing a lab coat? Okay, how many similarities can you see between your drawing and these? Okay, because there's lots and lots and lots and lots of people who will draw something like this when we think about what a scientist looks like. And it's easy to do that. It's easy to fall into that bias of this is what a scientist looks like. Okay, now I've got my own biases, but this is what I think. This is, these are the people who I think about when I think of who's a scientist, okay? This is Katie um, Bowman. She was fun is really important in this little picture here. It's the first picture of a black hole. This is the moment that her team, the team she was involved in, got the result, okay? That's who I think of when I think of scientists. I think about this chap, James um, Edward West. He developed the microphone that I'm using to talk to you. Okay, I think about Mary Curie. She is the only person in history to be awarded a Nobel Prize in Chemistry and Physics. Okay, I think about Jim. Okay, I can never pronounce his, his second name pro uh, properly. He's an amazing communicator of science. Okay, really important physics, uh, theoretical physics professor. I think about Brian Cox. Okay, another, um, another really important science communicator. Okay, working in CERN. I think about um, Amazing Grace, this woman um, fundamentally important to computer science, the development of our computer. She was the first person to coin the term computer bug. Okay, Grace Hooper, Grace Cooper, Grace Hooper. Okay, I think about Neil deGrasse Tyson, another really important communicator. Okay, got an amazing book on cosmology that I'd recommend you read. I think about Rosalind Franklin. Really, without her, without her work in something called X-ray crystallography, we wouldn't know what the DNA looks like. We wouldn't know about DNA. Okay, I think about my old boss, Roy Sambles. Okay, he got me through my PhD. Still a little bit scared of the man, but amazing scientist. I think about all these people when I think about a scientist. Okay, and I just wanted you to think in these troubled times that if you want to know what a scientist looks like, grab yourself a mirror and look at yourself because you can be a scientist, wherever you are. So, this week we're looking at particles and looking at separation techniques. Okay, now these are the four ones that you need to know about. You need to know about filtration, where we have some kind of mixture, a solid and a liquid, and we can use filter paper, okay, that will allow the liquid to pass through the holes in the filter paper, but it will stop the solid, and the solid will be left in the filter paper. So that separates a solid and a liquid. We can use evaporation, okay, to separate a solution, another type of mixture. Okay, when we heat up the solution, okay, the solvent will evaporate and it will leave behind the solute. So if you have um, salty water, you can put salty water in an evaporation dish, heat it up, the water will evaporate and leave the salt behind. We've also got distillation. Okay, distillation is like evaporation. Okay, it's using the idea of boiling points, but this time it's we, we don't we don't lose the evaporating solvent, we don't lose the evaporating liquid. So we're heating up this solution, and we can carefully control the boiling point up here. And if we get to the right boiling point of whatever the solution is, in this case it's water, okay, it will go down this tube where water, cold water, surrounds it, and it will cool down the inside of that tube. So this this water vapor that comes out from this solution will condense and drip into my beaker here and I'll get pure water. Now you can use distillation um, to separate a solution like salty water, but you can also use it to separate solutions of more than one liquid just by controlling that boiling point. The boiling point is really important here. And you can also use chromatography to separate solids that are dissolved in a solvent. Okay, so you almost certainly done this in your classes, where you draw a pencil line on a piece of um, filter paper or chromatography paper, you put a drop of ink or dye, you dip 
the bottom part of the chromatography paper into some solvents that dissolves the ink. Okay, and that ink will slowly wick up the chromatography paper and it will separate the different dyes. Okay, so these are the four types of separation techniques that you've come across before and you should know about. Okay, so your task this week is to research those four different methods to research filtration, evaporation, distillation, chromatography. Okay, how they separate different um, mixtures. And from your research, you need to create a poster or a leaflet or some other creative way of presenting your research. So you could make a PowerPoint document. You could record yourself doing a little science lecture. You could do any kind of creative thing that you can think of that covers those four separation techniques and includes a diagram. So you have to have some kind of drawing, some picture that's labelled of each of the four separation techniques. And you need to say what types of mixtures it separates and a brief description, so a couple of lines. Okay, if you love writing, you can maybe do a bit more, but a couple of lines would be fine. Okay, um, a just a brief description of how that process works. So, for instance, you could say for filtration, you could say something like, um, filtration stops the large solid particles, okay, from going through the small holes in the filter paper. The holes are small enough to let the liquid through, but they're um, not big enough to let the solid particles through. Okay, that could be a description. Um, and then we've got an optional little experiment. Okay, we're using crystallization. So it's another separation technique. Okay, we use crystallization to separate the solvent from water and it's a tasty experiment. So hopefully, if you do it properly, okay, you'll be able to get some kind of sugary treat at the end of it. Um, if you want to give that a go, keep the video rolling and I'm going to show you how I went about the experiments. If you don't, then you can pause the video and you can start your research and you can start making that poster leaflet or other creative way. OK, hope you're all having a wonderful week. Take care and goodbye unless you're staying for the next part of the video. OK, boys and girls, so this is separating a dissolved substance from a solution. Okay, crystallization is a separation technique we don't often do in school actually. We normally will do filtration and evaporation, but it's not something we normally do in school. So you're going to need some different equipment. I know when you're at home, you can have access to different things, but um, you're probably you're going to want some kind of container where you're going to mix. I'm using a measuring jug and I've got a spoon that's clean that I'm going to stir with. You're going to need some sugar. Now you can do it with salt if you want, but it won't be as tasty at the end. Okay, so you want some sugar. Um, you can have some food colouring to add. I think adding the food colouring and the flavour, I don't know if that's going to actually... I think that might change the shape of your crystals. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to try and do one with and one without. Okay, so I've got two containers. I've got, I've got a little, I've got a little, just an old clean um, jam jars. Okay, it's probably going to be best if they're a bit taller than this, maybe. I'm not sure what's going to be easiest, but this is the shape I'm going to use. Now you also need some kind of thread or a cocktail skewer would work, anything that you can dip into your sugar solution. Now you're going to need to support that with something. You can use anything that will stay secure on the top. So you could, you could put a, a pencil on the top. You could use, I've got a big paper clip that you could use. I'm going to use a straw cut in half. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the string, the thread or the skewer that you're putting into your solution is the right height. Okay. That's the first thing you want to do. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to cut this and tie it onto the straw ready to go. So hopefully you can see that I've got a string tied to a straw and it's coming down here. Now at the moment, this is too long because if I put it into the jar, it's going to touch the bottom of the jar. You don't want it to touch the bottom of your container. Okay, so I'm going to trim it. So it's only just, just at the bottom there. I I can actually cut. OK, 
go. My string is coming down to about a third or a quarter up from the bottom of my container. So now I'm ready to make my solution and add it to, okay. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna want is a almost saturated solution of sugar in water that's hot. Okay, now the instructions that are attached to class chat say, three cups of sugar for one cup of boiling water. Okay, so we're boiling the kettle and I'm gonna add, because I've already measured my jars, I'm gonna add just over 300 milliliters of hot water and I'm gonna see how much sugar I can dissolve in that water. I want as much of that sugar to be dissolved as possible, okay? So I'm going up to the 300 mark. And I'm gonna start adding some sugar. Now, I've given this a good stir, and I've got some sugar still at the bottom, okay? There's a lot of sugar that's dissolved, but not all of it at the bottom has dissolved. So I'm gonna stir it more, I'm gonna agitate it more to try to dissolve as much as possible. Now, I've, got, I've stirred this as much as I can, and no more is gonna dissolve. I'm not taking too long, because I still want it to be hot. Okay, I don't want it to drop in temperature too much. Now there are some sugar crystals at the bottom. When you're pouring the solution into your jars, you wanna make sure that none of those crystals go with it. Okay, you only want the sugar crystals to form on your string. That's how you'll get the best results. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the syrup into my jar. And I could do, I might actually see if I can do another one. So I've made far too much, far too much. Okay, I could have used half the amount of sugar and half the amount of water. Okay, so stick with the instructions that's on the sheet. Now, on one of them, I'm gonna add a tiny drop of the food coloring, a couple of drops. And I'm gonna put in some lemon because this was the only flavor that was in Tesco. Now these jars are going to be incredibly hot because you just put basically boiling water in them. So you need to let them cool a little bit before you find a place where you're going to keep them um, until those crystals form. It's gonna take some time, it's gonna take days. Okay, at least a day or two. Now, I've got some um, cupcake, cup, cupcake cases that I'm gonna use as a lid, okay, to keep anything from going into the actual jars themselves. Okay, and then I'm gonna put them and um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna find a place where I can let them, let the crystals grow. And that's it, boys and girls. Stop. Oh no, let's have a, let's have a close up.